15 years ago, I moved to Grayton Beach uh, to open a restaurant fresh out of college with uh, a lot of blind ambition and uh, rented an old building in the old part of Grayton Beach for uh, next to nothing. And uh, my first kitchen was a screened in porch with two backyard barbecue grills and an electric wok. And uh, been here since, uh, well, for the past 15 years. And about eight years ago, uh, about eight years ago, built a brand new building, brand new restaurant, big, beautiful kitchen like this. And uh, so the days of uh, cooking in a screened-in porch, thank goodness, are long over. But uh, we still have to work hard, and we do a lot of creative things here in the restaurant. The, um, the, the crux of my menu is a combination of Creole and Caribbean. We do a, uh, a combination of South Louisiana Creole and, and Caribbean Creole. And each distinctive area has their own cooking techniques and their own cuisine and as one studies the individual cuisines of the Caribbean islands you notice that there is distinct differences there are distinct differences from island to island and so uh, we highlight that on one particular part of our menu here at Criolas and that's our four course island hopping menu and this month we'll be doing uh, Guadalupean cuisine which is uh, one of, the, of course, one of the French Caribbean islands. Its uh, sister island is the island of Martinique. Martinican cuisine is more based uh, upon Parisian influences, and the um, the Guadalupean cuisine is more uh, traditional island uh, cuisine, African influences, native Carib Indians. Um, so, nevertheless, we uh, we have a lot of fun with it. We uh, we have a lot of interesting ingredients we can work with and I'm lucky enough to have a great staff of uh, culinary professionals to work with that get as jazzed uh, about creating new dishes as I do. What I'm going to be doing here is a uh, it's kind of a new style of Caribbean influenced duck. This is a Muscovy duck breast. I'm just trimming a little bit of the fat off of it right now. The uh, this breast is really nice. Most people don't realize that you ha that uh, you can eat duck rare or mid mid rare, medium rare. And uh, but what we've done first is treated this duck with a little bit of uh, Caribbean spices that allowed it to cure for a little bit on the skin. And we then wipe that off. And I'm going to just take this duck and it's best to slightly score the top of the skin to allow some of the fat to render out. But this duck is uh, sort of an interesting presentation because we incorporate the use of vanilla beans, real nice vanilla beans, into a savory presentation. And uh, at any rate, when uh, rendering out the fat on this duck, I always like to uh, just take my time with it, put it on sort of a medium flame, and uh, not hurry it because you want to be able to render out all the fat so the skin is nice and crisp and um, not overcook the duck at the same time. Right now, all I'm taking is, uh, as this duck renders down, I'll take this, which is a, uh, a cake made from risotto, and it has some basil and some uh, mango into it. So again, risotto being a traditional Italian presentation, we make it into a cake with some basil and some mango, uh, sort of a contemporary mixture of ingredients, and then we'll just sear this off. This is a, once these ingredients, once the cake is made, and uh, you have your sauces made. Preparing these items generally don't take, uh, preparing the dish and finishing the dish really doesn't take that long. Especially if you like to cook your duck like I do, so medium rare. Now I'm gonna just finish it up. Sometimes I like taking the skin off of this and frying it a little bit more like, like cracklings. Doing duck cracklings as you would pork cracklings. I'm just taking this duck now and, and slicing it, as we cooks call, 
on a bias or just at an angle it allows us to uh, fan, fan it out to make a nice presentation. Oftentimes when I'm at home cooking for my wife and my son, I, they accuse me of uh, spending a little bit too, too much time on making presentations out of something simple like, uh, gosh, I don't know, chicken pot pie or something like that. So after this point, that's all really, really ready to go. It's cooked just like I like it, sort of medium rash. Now I'll take this cake that I seared up, I'll bring it over. Part of the fun of having your own restaurant is being able to play with dishes and kind of a, a cool little glass and gold-plated dish here that we have. This, uh, this presentation, I like to take these French green beans that we've already poached off, and I'll take and, rent and use the same pan that the duck was rendered in. All we really need to do is just heat these up, salt and pepper them. In cooking, sometimes I like to incorporate a couple of different oils into a cooking cell. I'll add just a little bit of the extra virgin olive oil to this to heat it up. Just fan out your duck here for a nice presentation. And then uh, we, this, is, this is a plantain chip, a plantain being a green banana used in the tropical regions of the world. And we've made a little chip out of it with, for a little garniture. We'll put this underneath our cake. And here we have some vanilla bean that's been uh, oven roasted and then pureed. Makes a nice little garniture for the plate and for the duck itself. Kind of finishes out that vanilla flavor. Little citrus zest. These things are all easy to prepare ahead of time. This is a little red bell pepper emulsion. Cooks these days, contemporary cooks enjoy painting plates with sauces. And that's essentially what I'm doing here. This is a little demi-gloss, which is a French term for a uh, stock-based uh, uh, reduction. This one has uh, jerk seasoning in it and uh, some mango pureed up and then strained. And I'll incorporate that onto the duck itself. Paint the plate. 